globalization has accelerated the free movement of goods, services, capital, information, and people at breathtaking speed since the fall of the Soviet Union and the simultaneous rise of information technologies in the 90s. And in many ways, that acceleration hasn't slowed down, only changed. UPS sees the world's trends and shifts in many cases before anyone else. What is UPS seeing today? What is the character and feeling of today's globalization? Noel Massey has thought-provoking answers. Noel Massey is the U.S. Operations Manager for UPS. This session was captured live from Get Global in Los Angeles. You can find video of Noel's session and his presentation materials on Get Global's YouTube channel listed in this podcast episode notes. I hope you're having a good day, and I hope you're learning something you can take back in a useful way uh, to wherever it is uh, you traveled in from or who you work with. You know, UPS, our international journey began in the early 70s. And it was the idea that in the U.S. market, we were beginning to grow at a pretty fast rate. I don't know that you're aware that as an organization, uh, back in the early 70s, we were not completely integrated in the U.S. market. That didn't happen for us completely until the mid-70s, around 75, 76. And after that integration, where you could ship product from coast to coast, address to address in the U.S., our volumes exploded. We experienced growth like we'd never seen in the prior 67 uh, years we'd been in business. And over the next three to four years, as we moved towards the 80s, it became necessary for us to think about how consumers in the U.S. want to do a trade across borders. And our first entry into a foreign market was real close by. It was Germany. So we took our assets and our people into the German market, and that became our first global expansion. We really thought we were gonna tell Germans what to do. And we found that that was a bad idea. So my talk is titled, Lessons Lived and Learned. Hopefully you can learn from some of those as you do uh, business uh, in the way that you do it. Because clearly culture is a strong and powerful and necessary thing to understand when you talk about taking your business global. And at UPS, our experience in Germany taught us very quickly that the world does not always flow in the way that we think it does. Behind me, you see an upside down map of the globe. That was about how our experience in Germany felt to us at that time. We'd enter into a new market, and we clearly felt that we were upside down in it. It didn't look the way we thought it was gonna look. It didn't behave the way we hoped it would behave. And we experienced losses uh, in that experience. But it taught us a lot about what the future would have to be in a way that was different at UPS. And clearly those lessons have helped us become a global company that today has business in 220 countries, with UPSers all over the world that total over 400,000 people. The fact of the matter is, $4 trillion of goods and services trade hands globally between the U.S. market and the rest of the world. 50 years ago, that number was $50 billion. 50 years ago. And you say, oh, 50 years is a long time, right? 50 years ago, 50 billion, 4 trillion. Well, let me help you with something. If you had $50 billion 50 years ago, it wouldn't be $4 trillion today, more than likely. But what the Kager looks like on that growth for the last 50 years is 16% annual growth for 50 years in a row. Think about that. Over the last 50 years, exports and imports in the U.S. has grown at 16%. And more importantly, in the near term, exports and imports, exports, exports specifically, 
And I'll talk about China because it's a very relevant market. It's a market that gives a lot of opportunity and can be learned from quickly. But exports from the U.S., exports alone from the U.S. to China over the last decade from 2006 to 2016 has grown at 115 percent, which is more than a 10 percent annual growth. If your business was focused in the Chinese market, you would have an opportunity, of course, to participate in that export growth, which means on the back end, your business would experience growth that was aligned with that trajectory, with that CAGR. So what is $50 billion 50 years ago? That would be the size of the state of North Dakota today, or South Dakota, whichever one you prefer to pick. $4 trillion is a combined economy of the entire state of Texas, Florida, and New York. That's what $4 trillion of economy looks like. And that's what import and export activity in our country looks like today. And, the, oops. and here you see uh, a Chinese city, and you see a robust activity. But when you think about exporting into this market, and when you think about when you think about exporting into this market, you'd have to ask yourself, how, you, how would you do that and why would you do that? Well, let me tell you about the, some of, let me tell you some of the reasons uh, about uh, uh, your analytics around China might make sense for you. The fact of the matter is is today China has seven of the largest GDP cities in our top 50. And by 2030, that number is going to go to one third. So by 2030, we know at UPS that China will hold one third of the largest 50 cities in the world. And it just makes sense to prepare for that. It makes sense to prepare for a growing middle class. 1.4 billion people live in China. 350 million of them today are designated as middle class. By 2030, that number will be two thirds of their population. So it's expected to double. In China, you have cities with 10 million people in them. You have cities with 12 million people in them. Maybe cities you've never heard of. Tianjin is a, a good example of that. There's over 10 million population in that one city. And when building a strategy to export, this intelligence certainly can help you design and customize a strategy that may not be continent-based, but may be city-based. And one of the things I think you may have heard in your uh, earlier talks was overreach. One of the most common mistakes U.S. small businesses make is when they think about exporting, they think about a country. Look at that in reverse. Think about if you were in China and you wanted to export to the U.S. market, would you say in a way that I want to export to the U.S. or I want to target California? And maybe even more specifically, Northern California. Let's work in that market before we think about the entire U.S. market. The same thing holds true when exporting out of the U.S. into a foreign market, whether it be China or any other country. So as China emerges and grows and sophisticates, businesses would be wise to take advantage of the opportunity. UPS has been in China since 1988. That's been our experience. And how did we enter the market? We built a relationship with the largest logistics company in China at the time. Uh, the name of the company, Sinotrans, and the partnership we built with them is what taught us the customs and culture in the Chinese market. Those lessons were extremely valuable in our early stages because before we made a great investment in the market, we knew we needed to learn very clearly a few things because our experience in Germany had taught us that. Our experience in Germany had taught us that when you enter into another country, it's a smart idea to go native. 
it's a really smart idea to partner with local integrators and local business people so they can teach you what you need to know about the culture, which clearly you probably don't know. And at UPS, we found that to be the case. So culture and customs, when you think about them, t tend to take on a different tone to a small business owner. The first place a small business owner goes is culture, is customs, excuse me, is customs. They want to understand how to get their product into that space. They want to understand what the tariffs are, what the landing costs look like, and I'll talk about that a little bit more later. But they want to understand how to get their widget into that country through the borders. And of course, that's important because the biggest mistake that I've seen in the hundreds of visits I've done with small business owners is to make an assumption that what it is they're doing here is sought after there. And also to make an assumption that the price points that they sell for here will work there. And oftentimes when they make that leap, they do it before looking. And it ends up in catastrophic failure. Working around customs is always a bad idea. So at UPS, we spend a lot of time with our small business owners teaching them how to work with customs. An example of that would be a company in Detroit called MyLocker.net, an apparel company. They customize products, textiles, for companies in China looking for this type of product, sweatshirts, T-shirts, you name it. They design it here in the U.S., they distribute it in China. We worked with MyLocker.net on a couple of fronts. First of all, understanding the customs side of the business. And then second of all, understanding the culture in China. That no, the culture in Shenzhen or Shanghai didn't exactly look like the culture in Detroit. And to just blindly enter that market without knowledge of the taste, culture, and customs in the Chinese market would probably end badly for them. But at UPS, one thing we've learned over the years is as our customers grow, so do we. As their exports grow, so do ours. And MyLocker.net is a great example of a company that customizes products now in China and they service, and they're able to service over 300 cities in China through our network. Because our network gives capability and capacity. And you can see, you can see here uh, a picture of a UPS vehicle in France. You can see an aircraft and you can see a transaction across the counter at a UPS facility uh, as well in China. And the fact of the matter uh, is, is that capacity gives you access, the equipment to get there, but it certainly doesn't guarantee you can enter the country. And entering the country is more than docking a ship uh, in a port. Understanding customs is a critical component of exporting. Now, when you think about that, and particularly if you start thinking about global customs, that's where overreach can become a significant issue. Focusing on a market, learning how to navigate that market will teach you lessons about other markets, whether it be Europe, whether it be Canada, where the greatest opportunity is, is where you should aim your arrow, and you should understand the nuanced side of customs as well as you can early. Because the fact of the matter is, is those things change, and at UPS, uh, we are adept at helping our customers see the change quickly, adapt to the change, so they can have a seamless flow uh, as they move forward. Our network of aircraft is what gives companies like MyLocker.net access. And in China, we fly over 200 flights weekly. So we have 200 frequencies weekly in and out of 300 cities. So when you think about 
our knowledge base in and out of those markets, it is there to be leveraged by small business owners. And when you think about once, once our customers understand what the access looks like, then comes the hard part. And the hard part is always getting the small business owner to understand that they have to make an investment beyond the aircraft and beyond the ship in understanding the culture. I've heard discussion today about culture, how to enter culture. You look at the program, there's a lot of conversation and experts here who talk about culture. And I may be preaching to the choir. However, the greatest downfall for all small businesses when they export their products to another uh, environment is not understanding the culture. The minute they make investment beyond the U.S. border, the minute they send people, the minute they get investment in infrastructure, partnering with local natives is clearly the most effective way to understand the culture. And as I spoke to earlier, our experience in Germany taught us a strong lesson about understanding the culture. Because we became very successful in Germany when we went native. When we began to train native Germans to run UPS operations. When we began to partner with locals, and China is no different for UPS. We continue down that path. We continue down that journey. Not only do we need to understand the culture on the business side, more importantly, we need to understand the political side. And we make a great investment in understanding how Chinese governments in different provinces function. Because culture ultimately is gonna determine how wide a reach and how broad uh, our opportunities become. We just released a report and we do it annually called the Pulse of the Online Shipper at UPS. This intelligence helps U UPS small business owners understand the behavior patterns and traits, not just in the US market, but more specifically, recently, we've built Pulse of the Online Shopper for the global market. And the fact of the matter is, is that a person does not buy and shop in Spain with the same thought process that they buy and think with in Asia. It's very different. Shopping cart abandonment is one of the most uh, debilitating things that can happen to a business using the network where people visit the site but buy nothing. And at UPS, we make an investment to help small business owners understand, uniquely speaking with their products, why that may be occurring to them. But it also cites how people buy with mobile devices, whether they use PCs, mobile devices, or are they using uh, retail experiences to make a decision uh, around purchase uh, points, be it in-store or out. It's quite extensive. And we have a version of it that we just began to make investments in over the last few years that talk about global buying behaviors. And once we determine, and once we determined at UPS that we were gonna make an investment, particularly in e-commerce, we really had to take a look at our commitment and capacity. And here you see an air gateway uh, in China. And the fact of the matter is, is that commitment and capacity, uh, as, it, as it goes, uh, takes a significant amount of investment. This photo is of our hub in Shanghai, which processes 36,000 pieces per hour. And when we made that investment, clearly we showed commitment to grow capacity. On the right side, you'll see a customs clearance in Shenzhen, and it's 24 hours a day. The importance of this is for a small business owner who takes the leap, takes the risk to move their product beyond US borders, they wanna have optics on it at all times and clear visibility. If for whatever reason, it stops in its tracks at a border. If for whatever reason it stops in its tracks for some other unknown uh, potential hazard, 
We want to make sure that the comfort level of the U.S. small business owner with their product is there because that grows confidence. And with confidence comes success. The online buying experience in Asia does not look like the online buying experience in the U.S. What are we familiar with here? And, I, and I'll go very quickly to Amazon. You know, at UPS, Amazon is our biggest customer, clearly. And when customers buy today, like you in this audience, you think Amazon. Well, in Asia, they do not think Amazon. Alibaba is the largest online distribution e-commerce channel in Asia. And we've partnered with Alibaba. And why did we partner with Alibaba? Because they understand the culture, not just in China, they understand the culture in Singapore, they understand the culture in Taiwan, they understand the culture in Hong Kong, they understand the culture. They understand the pulse of the shopper in their theater. And so we've developed products and we're collaborating with Al Alibaba on product development to make the online buying experience look, taste, and feel the way that the shoppers in their theater want them to look, taste, and feel. And we continue to build relationships with local integrators uh, in a way that makes delivering products to the front door as seamless as it is here in the U.S., for, for that same experience uh, in Asia. And we continue to look for more opportunities to build partnerships, even though we've been there since 1988, and that's critical. One example, another example here in the US of a company that has leveraged into our network, leveraged into our 200 flights weekly, leveraged into our capacity in our hubs, into our technology, that has leveraged into our intelligence is a company in San Jose, California, a medical device company called Align. And what Align does is they create a polymer-based brace. They make braces and they make them out of polymer, out of a polymer. So if you're an orthodontist in China, you put in your order and the braces are produced, you send your product here, and you put it in your order, you take the template there, we bring it over to the US market, it goes to a line in San Jose, California, they make the brace, the polymer brace, and then we move it back to the orthodontist in China in multiple markets for their patients. That product is less than two years old. They've experienced double digit growth every single month. When you look at the impact to their revenue, when you look at the impact to their newly developed product, it's skyrocketing. The fact of the matter is, is if you're, if you're aligned and you intend to sell into the US market, here's the numbers, five and 95. The US is 300 million people, just, just slightly ahead of that. Out of 7.4 billion human beings on this planet, in the U.S., we are less than 5% of the U.S. global, of the world population. The U.S. is less than 5% of the world population. Who wouldn't sell into the other 95%? Why would you not do that? Would a line sell into just the state of California and say, well, we can't sell into the rest of the country? Well, no, of course not. I think today, small business owners have to understand that despite all the conversation you hear today politically about nationalism and protectionism, the antecedents to that thought are far greater than the ones driving. Globalism isn't going away. The world population of 95%, the, 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 the population of 95% of this planet that's not in the U.S. is an opportune market to grow revenue, grow jobs, and create prosperity here in this country. Align Medical Devices is a clear example of that. MyLocker.net is a clear example of that. At UPS, we intend to help continue that narrative in the future. 
We're making tremendous investment in technology. In the video you saw, you saw drones. We haven't deployed those yet. One day, no doubt. One day, no doubt. But the fact of the matter is, is there's a changing environment. There's a changing world. And as you've heard from the speakers today, it's going to continue to change in a way that makes opportunity outside the U.S. productive in a, in a way that makes sense for any business willing to make uh, that foray. And UPS will be there uh, to help continue to build those bridges uh, for U.S. small business owners. And I'd like to thank you for your time.